Hey, it's Brian Late back with some more stuff about Star Wars because why not? So this comes from Screen Rant, where the best fan theories go to die. Or maybe the worst fan theories. I don't know. So this is Stephen Colbert. Really? The Stephen Colbert? Or is this Colbert? <clears throat> so we have theory. Snoke is Darth Plagueis. This is back yet again. And Star War, not Star Wars 9's real villain. I think people just cannot uh, accept the fact that uh, Ruin Johnson just killed Snoke off. He basically destroyed everything. Um, now, I'm not going to say J.J. Is, is brilliant. I think a lot of his setups were baloney. But, uh, you know, at least they had the potential to go somewhere. And uh, Ruin decided, hey, I'm just going to flush the whole thing. Uh, so the popular Star Wars fan theory that Supreme Leader Snoke would be revealed as Darth Plagueis in Star Wars Last Shot. He seemingly died with Snoke, but the story could still be true. I guess he could be a force ghost from the Sith point of view, uh, making Darth Plagueis the biggest Star Wars villain of all of them all. <clears throat> so Star Wars Episode Nine arguably has even more writing on it than uh, The Force Awakens did as the franchise reveal after the Disney purchase. Yes, because uh, we were dying for Star Wars. We, we, we could have They could have just showed the Star Wars logo for two hours and people would have freaked out. So they had a great deal of uh, forgiveness from the fans. And of course, they gave us a new hope yet again. Because apparently that's what a lot of people want. Is just They just want to relive the original trilogy over and over and over again. Um, but they don't like their heroes being crapped on. And uh, that's was why The Last Jedi had so much, so much ba backlash, even from people who like or love The Force Awakens. I, I, I digress. Not only does Star uh, Episode uh, 9 have to wrap it up, the sequel, but fans also have to be uh, looking for it to give some sort of greater significance to the two trilogies made by George Lucas. On top of that, the poor box office performance, the slowest Star Wars story, and divisiveness of, of Star Wars Last Jedi put in a, an additional burden on the course correct, needed or not. Yep, and that divisiveness was on purpose. I think uh, Ruin was just trolling the fans, and that's all there was to it. Uh, he, you know, and, and Disney didn't stop him. Lucasfilm didn't stop him. Kathleen didn't stop him. JJ didn't stop him. They all had the power to. I mean, Kathleen is hot, has fired, what, more than half of her directors, something like that, on all the uh, Star Wars films. Uh, Rogue One technically had three. There was a guy who started very early, uh, and then they was dismissed. Uh, and then we had uh, Gareth Edwards, and then 45% of his stuff was redone. We had uh, the guys doing Solo, both fired. <clears throat> we had a guy who was supposed to do the the um, the the, uh, the, nine, the Star Wars 9 was fired. Anyway, uh, the abundance of, the, uh, of fan theories. And I, I love that there's fan theories because it really shows there's engagement. Now, a lot of people don't like them, but I, I like the, the intellectual engagement and in try to figure out what's going on. Um, and when I have had my own theories, uh, it's been great when I've been wrong and I've been blown away by the, by the better ideas, uh, especially in, in the original trilogy. So it suggests reasons for the backlash against Star Wars Last Shot with fans getting too invested in what they... Now, this is not what happened. It wasn't that they were too invested and disappointed. It was garbage. Uh, the story presented by John Ronson was garbage. It, I think if 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 their expectations hadn't you know been correct, if their fans their theories had been bad and and you know pro shown wrong, rather, and the movie was great, all had been forgiven. They'd be like, oh, that's so brilliant, I love it. But that's not what happened. It was a poop on the fans. Well, fans will surely avoid getting too invested in theories about how the story could go. Theories are half the fun of the anticipation. I agree with that. Theories for Star Wars Plan 9 from Outer Space. Uh, sure to come in as much, if not more abundance. Okay. And uh, Darth Plagueis theory should be right up there. Wrapping up the nine uh, episodes of uh, Skywalker Saga. Uh, the, the, the saga was wrapped up in six. Uh, it should have been kind of the uh, the solo uh, Skywalker saga after that. And, um, you know, some people are like, well, come we have Skywalker. Go read uh, Roman history. And when Rome went from a republic to an empire and then complain that it's two, two or three families, you know, Mark Anthony and, and uh, Caesar and his family. Um, yeah. How come it's just a handful of families? Just just two or three key players. Uh, the Snoke's Plagueis theory is born out of early speculation of Star Wars Last Jedi as fans scramble to discover the true identity of the new villain and master of Kylo Ren. Uh, Supreme Leader Snoke, with the, you know, the the Supreme Leader with a horrible name. Part of the initial arrival of Darth Plagueis was born out of the fan desire for anything, uh, for everything in Star Wars to be connected in the same way fans speculated Rey was a Skywalker fan was related to Mace Windu or Lando Calrissian. I think that would have been great, um, but... Uh, part of it that nonsense that lucas put in he, you know he made all these jedi um you know monks basically and celibate and that was dumb and uh, yeah it would have been awesome if finn was saying like the great grandkid of of uh, mace windu or something like that 
Uh, and I, I actually would have liked to have seen Finn be force sensitive. It was kind of hinted at, and it would have been something different. But instead, we get a, a black stormtrooper. Oh my god! Um, where you know the stormtroopers in the original series were they were played by women too. I mean, it was just anybody. Uh, you know, the the clones was the Clone Wars, and they were replacing them. Anyway, Plagueis wasn't a name. Fans arrived at simply by grasping at straws that Plagueis originates uh, from the story Chancellor Palpatine told Anakin Skywalker as he schemed to turn the young Jedi to the dark side. He knew Anakin was scared for his wife Padme's uh, well-being. I thought that was two words. but uh, And already vowed to not lose uh, anyone close to him after his mother died, uh, which actually that was pretty pretty good. Um I must say, again, I think that should have happened in the first movie. I you know, think he should have been about 19, 20 years old, goes off, or maybe very early in the second one. He gets word, you know, his mother's sick or something. So he told him the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Uh, a Sith Lord supposedly had the power to manipulate the medical... Uh, it's mid I thought it was midichlorians uh, to both create life and prevent death. He taught his apprentice uh, Darth Sidious Palpatine everything he knew, and Sidious killed him in his sleep. Palpatine said it was ironic that Plagueis could save others but not himself. Uh, the main theory that Snoke is Darth Plagueis is enticing was that it brought the third Star Wars trilogy into a more thematic continua- continuity with the prequels and the original trilogy. So I guess he just disappears for 40, 50 years? Is, is that it? I guess he's collecting his power. Uh... And um, Last Jedi brought plenty of black. Uh, okay, The Force Awakens and, and Last Jedi brought plenty of back of the original. Yeah, uh, but it was a new arc, a clean break from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Um, what? It was not a clean break. They're just retelling the old stories. Uh, you know, the, the Last Jedi is kind of Empire and Jedi kind of backwards in, in many ways. And we're, it looks like we're going to get, e, you know, new Ewoks and everything else. That's just stupid. Something very interesting happened in, with the Star Wars prequels and the fans were looking for the uh, sequel trilogy to emulate this dynamic. Um, what happened that was very interesting? While the original trilogy presented Luke Skywalker as a series protagonist, a wider view of both the prequels and the original trailer revealed a larger story about Anakin Skywalker making his character arc far more significant than Luke's. Um, yeah, that is, I think that's true even in the original because the idea of turning uh, Anakin back to the light uh, was actually quite, and, and Lucas has stated many, many times that the original series, uh, the original trilogy is, is the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. That's the whole arc uh, that got created. So Luke is a part of that. And so, uh, you know, it would be nice to see Luke not fall prey to that. And then maybe the next generation does. And that's kind of what happens in the EU that they flush down the toilet. And while Darth Vader was the villain of the original trilogy, Palpatine came, well, he came in at the last second to serve as a bigger villain. Uh, not really. He was the power behind. He's mentioned in the first one. And it's kind of like uh, Spielberg's movie Jaws, where you don't see the shark for a long time. Now, in many ways, it's because they had mechanical problems with the shark apparatus, but it, it or the Hitchcock, right? You don't see the, the, the true uh, villain behind the curtain for a long time. And that, I think, was a very good reveal. And uh, you, the Emperor's mentioned, and I think this is what uh, how Vader should have been in Rogue One. Uh, Vader should never have appeared as he did. He should have been like on uh, posters and maybe a statue and other things. His presence should have been there, but not himself. Uh, so kind of like if you set a let's say a, a movie a story in, in Nazi Germany or say Stalinistic Russia, you don't need to have either Hitler nor Stalin in you know the movie. Uh, per se, but you can have the persona be there through uh, mentions and you know on billboards. You know, only you can prevent the rebels or something like that. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, after the prequels, so fundamentally changed the way Star uh, fans see Star Wars as a whole. Uh, how did how was that? I guess you're supposed to click that link. Um, how could this new series come in and do that again? It's certainly a tall order, but something else uh, could feel like a cheap cash guy. It, it didn't fundamentally change the way I see Star Wars at all. It just kind of filled in the back. You, you could see from the heights that the Jedi fell and the, um, the Republic fell into empire, you know, into the, 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 the despicableness 20 years later of the empire. It's certainly a tall order, but everything else could feel like a cheap cash grab. Uh, it all, it all feels like a cheap cash grab from the start. A third trilogy that is standalone and doesn't go all the way back to the prequels and reveal a large story can be essence, uh, such uh, just an epilogue. Uh, I kind of wish they would have done that. Uh, maybe had it 40, 50 years in the future and all of our heroes are, I think you could have Luke still around and, um, but 
considering what they did to everybody, um, I really wish they would just left them alone and just continued and have been just legends or something and get mentioned. And maybe you see them in a, a some, somebody finds, you know, a data storage of holograms or something. And that's how you, you that's the only presence in the movie. But um, again, there are so many people that wanted the original trilogy back. They didn't grow up with it. And they came 20, 30 years too late and blah, blah, blah. It's, just, it's like the Szechuan sauce at McDonald's all over again. This is uh, all solved by making Snoke Darth uh, Plagueis in the same way uh, Palpatine book ended the first two trilogies as the ultimate villain. Darth Plagueis could come in and at the end reveal that even Palpatine and his empire were simply caught up in the web of an even bigger. Yeah, yeah to me, that's just a huge retcon. What I think if you, it, I think you, you treat it more like Sauron in um, Lord of the Rings. You know, the, he, the ring is cut from his finger. His body becomes um, spirit. You know, his body disappears because the ring was holding him together. And his, uh, it takes decades. It's actually, I forget how many, is it a couple hundred years? But it takes time for his uh, power to re-manifest in Mordor. And uh, in the meantime, we have uh, various kingdoms of men that come and go and they, they war with each other. And Gondor uh, has a steward when the king of Gondor is killed. The ring is lost for a long, long time until it feels its master's presence, and then it uh, leaves Gollum and finds it tries to find its way back to its master. So that would be better as opposed to some kind of stupid manipulation by Plagueis. If Plagueis um, sensed at the last second that his apprentice was going to kill him, his his spirit, you know, his force ghost, if you will, uh, collects in the universe and slowly over time uh, reconstitutes into a body that is Snoke, and then he's manipulating a a post Palpatine environment. I think that would work much better, and that would be closer to the way the the Lord of the Rings kind of goes. There's a source of evil, but then there's this concentration, and to have him as the puppet master retroactively, I think that is just dumb. Uh, unfortunately, Snow, uh, Snoke is unceremoniously killed off in Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Fan theories about Plagueis died with him on the throne. See, now here's what's interesting: if you do make him Darth Plagueis and you do it like I um, stated, now that he's back, his hubris could then prevent him again because it could be that either he maybe he senses too late, like as he's being cut, and his he's able to be, you know because he's been doing meditation and stuff, spread his um, his. Uh, spirit amongst the, the the galaxy so he's not fully gone uh, but this time he's so full of hubris he's able to control things and manipulate and thinks he's so powerful that he doesn't even see it coming and then he's ill-prepared when the lightsaber cuts him in half uh, I think that would be fine um, but if they're gonna retcon that whole thing and say he was the puppet master all together that's just just that's a cop out and I think it's lame and dumb last Jedi doesn't disprove Lord Arthur, I guess, uh, the doesn't disprove. No, it doesn't. One of the most controversial decisions made by Star Wars Last Jedi was the shocking death of Supreme Leader Snoke leading up to the movie. Snoke was one of the most theorized aspects of the movie. Not to, Again, Ryan Johnson read all that and he, um, you know, his idea was to poop on the fans and that's exactly what it did. Uh, let's just keep going. I don't feel like reading every single line. Uh, a million fan theories cried out and were suddenly silenced. <laughs> a nice uh, turn of phrase there. Turned as they were on Snoke. And brutally uncertain when they cut him in half. It was Snoke somewhat, uh, some, um, if Snoke was someone important, he wouldn't have been killed off like that, right? Well, if Plagueis theory was true all along, then it already is making the assumption that he saved himself from dying at the last uh, one skin. Uh, and why not again? Uh, again, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. And uh, cause, or, or you could say that he was concentrating so hard in keeping his body together that he didn't sense. And that's, that's what happens. Um, uh, the revenge of the Sith, it seems pretty confident that he killed Plagueis years before the prequel trilogy. Uh, but as we come to see, see decades later during the battle of Endor, his overconfidence was his undoing and that overconfidence could have led it again. Um, this is a theme that, well, Tolkien does it a lot, but there's several other writers, especially when they're writing from some kind of a Christian uh, based view of the world, whether they're full believers or not, we'll say uh, Western, Western European uh, Christendom uh, type theory is that, uh, evil brings uh, has within itself the seeds to the keys to its own destruction, and overconfidence. The Greeks uh, talk about this uh, hubris and and overconfidence in your abilities and things being your downfall. Pride cometh before the fall is in the Old Testament. It's a very it's a universal theme, I guess, at this point. Um, uh, it's very at least it's very borrowed in and around the Mediterranean, and I'm sure in China and other places, Japan, they probably have very similar things. So you could have that the the, the pridefulness here. Um, this is what uh, Sauron is very prideful to, that he can just sweep through Middle Earth and destroy uh, the humans once and for all, and it's his downfall. Uh, and flee to the unknown re uh, regions only to return. 
He doesn't need to flee to the unknown regions. He just needs to become spirit, and it takes him decades uh, to reconstitute himself, and he doesn't do a very good job of it. That's why he looks so scarred with that. Uh, there are plenty of other reasons to be skeptical that Snoke is Plagueis. Um, yeah, I don't. I think at this point, I don't really think that uh, Lucasfilm is really going to adhere to anything co- coherent. Uh, I think the, the fans have produced better theories of a who's what uh, than the actual movies themselves, and because they didn't have a plan for these three, Uh, You know, Lucas sort of had a plan. I mean, there's been a lot of speculation. How much did he really plan in advance? But And he changed some things as they went along the way. But for the prequels, he did have a plan. And and that was, I mean, it it was more coherent, even though I didn't like some of the aspects that he did. Uh, final some of the Skywalker saga. Yeah, I highly doubt that. When when Disney starts running out of money, um, they're gonna they'll, they'll reboot it somehow. Uh, this was a soft reboot. Uh, I don't would be surprised if they decide to skip and they basically do a re reboot. Um, that's a little harder. Uh, what a version of so it was merely provides closure for Ray Finn Poe. Uh, yeah, Finn and Poe, you know, can be really anticlimactic when compared to the previous uh, six movie arc. Yep. It definitely will be because what would be better if you're going to follow the old pattern is um, this wasn't uh, 7, 8, 9. This would be 10, 11, 12. Uh, Or uh, you're going to set up 10, 11, 12. Well, they haven't set up anything. They've only destroyed nonsense and, and, you know, pissed on the original trilogy and destroyed and that metachlorians. Will you figure out how you want to spell it, uh, please? The prophecy of the chosen one see, uh, says he'll bring uh, balance to the force, but exactly what does that mean has never been clear. Yeah, I, I that's one of, again, it's one of the many things of the prequels, and I'm like, what is balance? There's thousands of Jedi, and there's maybe one Sith. Um, you know, the Sith that powerful? Now we get in the Knights of the Old Republic, we get a lot of Sith, and then we have the the Yoda's always to there are stupidity. Uh, again, um, Lucas unchecked uh, was the biggest problem with the prequels. Uh, the, the Jedi don't you know, even know what it means for the Force to be out of balance. Um, yeah, the whole Chosen One stuff was just stupid. Uh, to have Anakin, this Christ-like figure, was just dumb. Um, so he just finally admits in a prophecy that misread could have been. A strong argument that if Plagueis had been the ability to manipulate life through the, the Metachlorians, uh, then the Lucas uh, Skywalker themselves could be the cause of the Force being out of balance. Um, and this is also one of the theories that uh, in The Last Jedi, why Rey comes to be powerful without any training, with just is, because the Force is out of balance because there's only a dark side user. And he's not a Sith, but that's all there is because, you know, Luke is just out there somewhere. Um, at the prequels, reframed the Star Wars saga, with, uh, reframed the Star Wars saga from being about Luke uh, Skywalker and the Return of the Jedi into the story. It did not. It, the, that was the whole thing. Again, Lucas himself said that's what the original trilogy was about, was the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. Now, the books all said based on the adventures of Luke Skywalker because Luke was that pivotal point. And so he used the protagonist uh, to move this along uh, and, and cause, you know, his father to redeem himself. Um, but the prequels didn't, that was already done with the Return of the Jedi. The prequels had nothing to do with that. I, I This guy's an idiot. Uh, once again, I, I think it's like he just keep bringing this point up so that his article's long. Because this is a long freaking article to, to, to make one simple point that it may or may not be. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to skip along. Based on the conflicted arc established for Kylo. Uh, he's not conflicted. He's just an emo uh, wine wannabe. He's a Darth Vader wannabe. It's easy to see him coming to the realization that that this is his true purpose, driven to be to let the past die. He could sacrifice himself to destroy Plagueis. I don't even give a crap what he does. It's not a, a flawless theory. It gets messy in the question of who the Chosen One actually is. Now, the Chosen One... Uh, <sighs> Chosen one was Anakin, uh, but we're not, you know, this is Disney trying to rewrite it again. This is Kathleen Kennedy and, and her, her quest to destroy Lucas and his uh, legacy. We're going to make, you know, Ray is going to be the chosen one. Um, Ray is an unstable mess and uh, completely unjustified. Uh, Plagueis, while it's not uh, specified in canon, has traditionally uh, depicted as a mum in Star Wars uh, legacy material. Snoke's species isn't specified, and he bears a minor resemblance to a mum. I guess that's how you say that. Moon, moon, uh, moon. I don't know. But their characters is skinny and long faces easily rule uh, him out. Given it is, it's an easy enough retcon for the purpose of throwing. Again, if he reconstituted his body not very well, that could um, easily be explained in like a, a line of dialogue. Um, 
there's also the issue of introducing the entire franchise true villain in the final act. You know, it's because they have no, they were, they were betting on the goodwill of the fans and they had no plan what to do. And, um, they are scrambling to be relevant. And that's, again, this is another one of these articles that is trying to make the, the, um, the sequel trilogy seem good and it's garbage. It's just, uh, Disney trying to get their investment back. They uh, basically have 10 years uh, to get that $4 billion plus interest because they did have to borrow the money done uh, and they're having to spend a crap ton more money uh, to get there. And they're not profitable yet. And, um, and the Star Wars thing's going down fast. The toys don't sell. Uh, the licensing fees are going down. Um, you know, Toys R Us went out of business and, and you can't blame that completely on Star Wars. It was part of it, but they, they were already in financial trouble before all this mess. So there's an entire outlet that is gone. And, uh, you know, the merchandising is where the real money is made as it was done in Spaceballs. Uh, so regardless, Star Wars Episode Nine has a lot to wrap up. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, it doesn't have to be. And it's being wrapped up by somebody who can't wrap up anything, has never uh, finished a story in his life. So... Uh, so we'll see. I don't know if there's any comments and there's a bunch of this gibberish. It doesn't look like there's any comments. Uh, you know, I think if they, if they make Plagueis to be Snoke and they do it more like the Lord of the Rings, as opposed to, as this, or uh, what was his name? Steven here suggests it could actually work, but to have him in, uh, the background really manipulating things is stupid. Just have him reconstituting himself and recollecting similar to what Sauron did when the ring was cut from him and he was defeated and it took hundreds of years for him to get back. You can just have this, you know, just take a few decades. Um, it's not really clear, uh, at least not from the prequels, how long before, uh, that, um, conversation that happened, right? How long has, um, Sidious been around? And, uh, how old is he could have been, you know, is this 20 years before, is this 50 years before a hundred years? So you could easily have it be, you know, a hundred years total or something like that, that it takes for him to reconstitute himself. Um, Palpatine's gone and there's a vacuum, uh, if you will, in the universe for a supreme, uh, evil. And, and maybe that's part of what helps draw it back together. But if you do some stupidity and make him the puppet master of the original trilogy and you retcon all that nonsense, uh, I think you're going to really piss a lot of people off. I think the, the Disney will burn after that. So I suggest they don't do that. But anyway, so what are your thoughts on Snoke and Plagueis and all this other stuff? Do you think this is just another cop out is another way to tie this horrible trilogy into the original uh, six and uh, justify their existence? Or is this, you know, just another fan theory that's just going to get flushed down the toilet? See you later. Bye.